down the road. Do you ultimately believe that a deal will be struck? Brian, I do. And in fact, all the indications are that the short-term economic pain, which we certainly see in both the United States and China, is going to lead the leaders probably this month to sign a deal, even though it's not going to tackle some of the issues that a lot of the Trump administration team, people like Robert Lighthouser and others, actually want to resolve. So Chinese structural reforms, um, they'll probably come up with some degree of uh, measures to where China will promise to open up more to do less forced technology transfers. And actually, most importantly, they'll probably come up with some agreement on what the call, what's called the snapback provision. In other words, if China doesn't abide by even the kind of more minimal things that they're expected to agree this month, then the United States can impose tariffs unilaterally. And that's actually been a sticking point for some time. But, you know, Brian, we are in an economic slowdown. In other words, cyclically, we're in the downside of the cycle, and neither country wants a downside of the cycle to be worsened by um, a worsening trade war. And I think that's why this morning we're not talking about uh, more tariffs on half of Chinese imports going into the United States. Well, China is trying to stimulate their economy, Linda. Do you believe that it will work? Yeah, great question. So one of the act absolute problems that China has this year is that in the cyclical slowdown, higher tariffs are adding to uh, production costs, and China is trying to rely more on its own consumers for growth. So both of those reasons mean the Chinese government is going to implement widespread tax cuts. We're talking 1 percent of GDP national output. But if they gear that tax cuts, which it looks like they're aiming to do, we'll find out more on Tuesday, that could actually help with reducing costs, boosting consumption, and really trying to mitigate some of the impact from the um, U.S. tariffs. But then they're going to be very tempted to do this. You already see some signs of this, that factory data in China shows contraction, a lot of indicators that the economic slowdown is probably worse than what, um, well, certainly what the government fears. So there will be a temptation just to boost investment, ease credit. And of course, that won't work very well. That just adds to the debt issue, which is one of the biggest concerns about the Chinese economy. Linda, do you believe that, that the Chinese government is ready, willing, and able to increase intellectual property protection for U.S. companies and U.S. Mm. patents? Yeah, that's a key question. I think it depends on how far advanced Chinese companies are now in terms of their intellectual property rights. The reason I say that is because for many, many years, China was imitating technology from the West. It's part of their catch-up strategy. But more Chinese firms now do have IPR that they want to protect, especially patents. So if Chinese firms are innovative, they want their IPRs protected, they're going to push the government to do that. It's in line with China's Made in China 2025 strategy, which is to get domestic firms innovating. So if Chinese IPRs really are worth protecting, then the Chinese government will protect IPRs, including that of foreign firms. But that's because the Chinese firms are already competitive. But the reason we don't know whether or not they really are competitive and worth protecting is because there's no data on licensing of Chinese patents. That's the key data we have for U.S. patents that tells us which patents are valuable, which ones are not, because people are willing to pay a monopoly price to license it. That doesn't exist for China, so we're all left wondering how much are Chinese firms really pushing for IPR protection, and even if they get it, is the Chinese government still going to be preferring Chinese firms over foreign ones? I think that's always a deep-seated suspicion there as well. And that's yeah. why this monitoring mechanism is going to be key uh, when President Trump meets President Xi, probably in Mar-a-Lago, this month.